What's going on YouTube? This is Justin aka Eliminator and welcome back to the channel. Uh, for this episode, I'm bringing you a Trick Room team. Here we go. Uh, let's see how Trick Room works in this meta without Glastriere. I mean, every single Trick Room team we see has Glastriere on it. Uh, so, you know, I decided, hey, let's bring in a Hatterini. See what type of uh, work that that can put in. Uh, I was using Hatterini Series 5, I believe. Uh, really, really fun Pokemon to use, uh, especially with that Magic Bounce. I personally, sometimes when I'm going against Hatterinis, I forget all about the uh, the Magic Bounce, and it ends up backfiring on me. But um, yeah, so I wanted to try it out. Uh, Dazzling Gleam Protect, Expanding Forest, Trick Room, pretty standard set. And right next to it is its best partner Pokemon, especially given the bulk that I'm giving it, the extra bulk that I'm giving it with that Psychic Seed, uh, the Ndidi. Really just for redirection, uh, but also the Helping Hand, um, you know, help as well. Uh, we also got underneath it two old friends of ours from previous videos. We got the Grim Snarl uh, with the Spirit Break, Reflect, Trick, and Fake Tears. Fake Tears is just an awesome move, especially given how many special attackers we have on this uh, team. But also I gave it the, the full incense just for another form of speed control, just in case I can't get that uh, Trick Room up. Uh, next to it, we also have the Celesteela, and this time I gave it Giga Drain. Uh, re main reason I gave it Giga Drain, uh, you know, I'll be showing it up next, but uh, I already have the fire coverage with the Marowak. But also, Giga Drain is just really annoying. Uh, it helps the Celesteela stay on the field towards the end game, uh, just soak up lots of lots of lots of HP from the opposing po uh, Pokemon, especially uh, once you have those special attack boosts. But yeah, Celesteela right there. We got the Marowak, uh, as I kind of talked about earlier, for that coverage, as well as Lightning Rod to soak up any electric moves. Uh, and then last but not least, we have the old friend Rotom. Uh, Rotom with the Nasty Plot Hydro Plump Thunder... Hydro Pump, sorry, not Hydro Plump. I don't know what's going on with my words right now. But Hydro Pump and Thunderbolt. So here's the team. Uh, rental code's right there. I'm also going to be posting the rental code and the poke paste. Uh, just as a little bit of information, the previous iteration, or I guess the first iteration of this team, had an Urshifu instead of the Marowak. And so if that's something that you're interested in doing, again, I'm going to leave the poke paste. You can kind of tweak the team around as you like. Uh, but this is my version of the team, and we're going to get into some battles. So let's go. We're going up against Han Solo, and Han Solo with the male in Didi. Wow, okay, so Mail and Didi is pretty annoying in this matchup um, with the Imprison stuff. And so it's not looking that great, right? Uh, but, however, however, if I can get the Rotom in, let's see here, Rotom... Rotom actually looks fairly good in this matchup. Rotom actually looks really good in this matchup with NDD. Um, I don't think I bring the, the the Hatterini just because, you know, it's it's not good in this matchup. Uh, but let's see here, Celesteel. I mean, once I can get rid of that, their Rotom, I think we're in a good position with with our Rotom, right? The Steela, and then I think I need the Grim Snarl. Just for the Urshifu, if anything. So, we're about to find out. I don't like going against male and DD matchups. Um, basically, the male and DD is on their team just to stop our and DD uh, trick room stuff. So, that's quite annoying. I, I mean, he's definitely going to lead with it, but we'll see. Han Solo. Which one is. Chewbacca. He kind of looks like Han Solo. He kind of looks like Han Solo. And and he did something completely unexpected, which is uh, start with the Landorus uh, Tyranitar. So, okay. I'm cool with that. Uh, I think this is an easy follow me uh, nasty plot, right? The special defense up. Nasty plot. Protect? I mean, if he was smart, he would lash out into my Ndidi and try to smack, lay a smack down into my Rotom, right? Uh, with something. So. 
What if I did protect? What if I did protect? I think that's a good I think that's a good play. Let's see what happens. They might even switch out the Landorus. So if I can get this plot off, we're in a good position. And he maxes right away. Okay, this is bad. Um This is bad. He maxes the the Landorus? Okay, so you get rid of your Sheer Force, right? Because Sheer Force doesn't work on Dynamax. So, big ol' Landorus comes out. Uh, I'm gonna protect. And let's see what they do. Do they double into my... Do they read into it? Okay, cool! Alright, we're in a good position here, then. Boom. I should get the nasty plot off. It's a crit. <laughs> well, that sucks. Okay, their life orb. That's great information. And the lash out comes out. Beautiful. Okay, that's that's a great turn one. Because uh, I get the nasty plot up. And then it's just a... Then it's just a follow me... Um, geyser. Right? Follow me geyser. Let's see. Indeedy... What do they have in the back? So they probably have the Rotom Heat in the back. But my assumption is, just get rid of this Landorus. And let's bring out the Grim Snarl. Right, because if you lash out and I bring out the Grim Snarl, we're in a great position. I just need to get rid of that terrain so I can start putting in work with the um, with the Grim Snarl. So I think my next turn I just throw a Reflect up. I mean we'll see what happens, right? Sometimes that's kind of my issue. I think like three moves ahead, and I don't even like look at what's happening in front of me. You don't know a good thing until it's gone, right? So, anyways, here we go. Rotom comes out, and we're gonna see a Quake. Okay, that's okay. Quake into the Grimmsnarl and just takes it out. Wow. Okay. That's not what I wanted to see. That is not what I wanted to see at all. Lash out comes out, which I'm cool with. The Geyser comes out. Hopefully this should take it out. I don't think it will. Um, it's at plus two. Oh, and it just dumps. Ooh, okay. I just dumped that water on you. Take it out. It's a crit. I think that crit did matter too. I mean, it would have been close. It had the special defense boost, uh, or plus two special defense boost, I guess. I guess Landorus isn't that that bulky of a Pokemon, right? So I bring in Ndidi. Ndidi's great for redirection at this point. Um, the Urshifu comes out, and it's the water one. It's the water Urshifu. Okay. So I think I... That's annoying. That's really annoying. Okay. So as long as this isn't sashed, I mean, it should be going down, but... Uh, let's see. I mean, I think I have to follow me, right? In rain, let's see. Surging strikes. Okay. Okay. So he's going to go through the, for the surging strikes on the Ndidi. Close combat on the Ndidi. That's interesting. That's actually really interesting. At that point, I should have just doubled then. Here comes the lightning. Ba -dum. Oh, and we do not see... We do not see the focus sash. Alright. Okay, that's great. That's We're in a great position right now. Um, 
Yeah, that's what I was scared of. And the Rotom comes out. Oh, we're we're good. We're we're absolutely positively thriving right now. So um, I think at this point I just helping hand. Yeah, I think at this point I just helping hand um, Geyser into the Titar. He might plot. He might plot. Discharge. Interesting. Okay. Paralyzes his own T-Tar, and that'll allow me to go first. <laughs> I love it. You love to see it, right? The Discharge comes out. That must be Sashed or something. Or not Sashed. Uh, choiced into something. Right? It has to be. Here comes the big ol' Celesteela, and we should be able to clean this up uh, as long as there's no... As long as there's no misses on my end with the Hydro Pumps. I mean, I could definitely miss with the Hydro Pump, but let's see what happens. I can try for Meteor Beam. I don't think I'll survive. Discharge. Oh, yeah. We're, 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 we should be good. Oh, and the Paralyze comes out. But I proc the berry. That thing is definitely choiced into something. Hydro pump comes out and I miss. I can't move. Okay, now it gets interesting. Hydro pump. I guess I go for it again, right? It's not a... Let's go, don't miss, don't miss. Oh my gosh. Okay. He's gonna take it. Wow. That was some stupid plays on my end uh, to go for the... Wow. <laughs> wow, okay. He's gonna clean up. Oh my gosh. What is... Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? What should I have done? I mean, I guess I could have thunderbolted it, right? That would have taken a chunk of damage out. What what was my play then? I don't get it. All right, well the annoying part about that last battle was that uh there was an Ndidi there and they didn't even bring the Ndidi out. So, I'm still trying to think about what I should have done in that position. I mean, I knew it was choiced, so it's not clicking anything besides Discharge. Uh, I don't know, that was that was, that was was fairly annoying. But anyways, I'm going to go Ndidi Hatterini on this one. Um, and I'm bringing the Marowak for sure. The Marowak's going to deal with that Aleki. And uh, I think I, I think I have to go... I think I have to go, uh, Rotom? I don't know, man. Rotom, you didn't do me well that last battle, so neither did you, Celesteela. Maybe it's the Grimmsnarl, then. Maybe it's the Grimmsnarl, then. Yeah. Just for that, um, just for that Urshifu. What the heck should I have done in that last one, though? I mean, I guess that's the game we play, right? RNG, but that's annoying. That's really annoying. Okay. Well, hopefully Oobs picks it up in time, locks his Pokemon in, and he does not. So we might end up seeing the, the Grimmsnarl. Um, uh, we, we, might, we might see a Grimmsnarl lead here. and Rotom Heat. With the big ol' hat, Grimmsnarl, Rotom Heat, yeah, I don't think he locked it in. So, in this position then, his Grimmsnarl is basically useless, right? Because if I get the Psychic Surge up, he can't really do any type of prankster stuff. So, 
Get the seeds off. And he has a Venusaur Aleki in the back. So yeah, this is this is an easy uh, trick room turn, right? Follow me. Let's see what he tries to do. He might set up the screens. Probably gonna set up the screens. He did set up the screens. Okay. All right, here we go. It's a game. Trick room comes up. And at this point, I just try to nuke into it, right? I try to nuke that Rotom because I don't want that to... I don't want that Rotom to, to, to pester me or to deal big damage. So I'm going to go into it, especially with the Steel in the back. Um, I think that's my play. Now, if he doesn't max, uh, this should be able to take him out, but we might see a max here. Usually when plot comes up, that means you're maxing. So, here it goes. And the good thing is you cannot fake Tears Me, right? The good thing is you can't fake Tears Me with the Psychic Turing up. Um... Big ol' oven. <laughs> I love Rotom Heat, but I hate it because it just killed us in that last battle. But I love it. Um, here we go. Helping Hand. And here comes the Mind Storm. And does not do nearly enough damage. And the Citrus Berry pops. It's looking bad. Looking really bad. Lightning into the Indeedy, okay. I'm not mad at that at all, actually. Cause that gives me a free switch in. Uh, yeah, that gives me a free switch in into. Into Marowak. No, Grimmsnarl comes out. He's going to try to change the terrain again, right? So I think what I do is I just swap back into the Marowak. And... Try to Mindstorm again. Let's try to take this thing out. Oh, this guy is reading me like a book. Shadow Bone coming off. And we have to smite. Because there's, there's no... Opponent is thinking. Opponent is thinking. Opponent is thinking. It's gonna trick. The lagging tail, that's fine. Uh, should be confused. Hopefully we get a lucky thing on the confusion. Shadow Bone comes out. Does not do enough damage. 
but a flare comes out into the Hatterini. Hatterini survives. Hatterini survives. Okay. So now we're good, right? Um, Now we are good, because the Grimmsnarl doesn't really pose an offensive threat to me. So... I think I might be able to finish this off with the, with the, um... With the Marowak. Potentially. Fusion hits itself, hits itself. Fake tears. Oh no. Shadow Bone comes out. Badoop. Get rid of that. And the Dazzling Gleam comes out. Get rid of that. Does not get rid of that. Okay. Well, that's pretty annoying. But I'm cool with that. Um. That's an easy switch in into my Grim Snarl, right? The Venu. How many more turns of Trick Room do I have? I got. So I think I try to set Trick Room again. Um, but he's gonna try to get rid of the Hatterini. So. Marowak comes back. Go Grimmsnarl. That's my Grimmsnarl. Sleep Powder. Protected by Electric Terrain. Hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself. And he does not hit himself. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I should have... <sighs> That's fine. Okay. So now it's a 2v2. And I got a pretty good uh, position here. Reggie Alecki. We're in a great position here. Okay. Um, so I think I just lagging tail because the Reggie Alecki can't touch me. So I just trick into the Venu and I protect just in case he tries to sleep powder me. Marowak uses Protect. Venu tries to Sleep Powder. Trick. Beautiful. And we should be in a very, very good position then. Wide Lens. Sleep Powder. Blocks. Blacka. Electro Web. I'm cool with that. Great position to be in. And I definitely try to, to Spirit Break Flare Blitz into the Venu. Uh, the Aleki can't touch me. The Aleki can't touch me. So we're in a we're in an excellent position here. Wow, we 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 kind of came back on this one. Lightning Rod comes out, which I'm cool with. Um, hits the. Grim Snarl, speed goes down, but you have in full incense anyway, so you're gone on this one. Flare Blitz pops off. Badu. Goodbye, Venu. Hit the Spirit Break. And then a Shadow Bone should, uh, or sorry, not a Shadow Bone, a Bone Meringue should take it out. Wow, that does a lot of damage. That does a lot of damage. The Sunlight fades. And that's an easy spirit break and bone meringue. Shadow bone. I need 100% accuracy here, right? Battle was canceled. We're good. I beat Ubs and he's going to sleep. 
Okay, and we got another Aleki. Uh, Dustclops. We have kind of a Trick Room team here, actually, that we're going against. Uh, interesting. Okay, so... Um, when I see this, the Moltres is what scares me the most. Does it? No. Stack Attack is pretty scary, too. Actually, that whole team is kind of scary. Um... But I definitely want to bring Grimmsnarl, Steela as my one and two. Marowak in the back. I don't even think I set up Trick Room in this. Just because of the threat of Stack Attacka, right? And Moltres. Yeah, I don't even think I bring my Trick Room mode. I think this is a good position to be in right here. So, Modestoke Stadium against Kilster. Sisler? Silser? Silster. Looking all swagged up with the blue. Okay, we get the Aleki and the Moltres, okay? I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that at all, actually. Um, because what I think I do is I just Spirit Break and try to get its uh, special attack down. And I bring in the Marowak. No, no, that's that's dumb. I, I'm gonna fake tears. Let's see, okay. That could very well be a Volt Switch into his own Pokemon. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set up the Marowak in for the Grimmsnarl and try to take out its... Try to take out the Aleki. Oh, I hope I made that. hope I made that. Grimmsnarl comes back. Good. Marowak comes in. Big ol' Moltres. Moltres is a very scary Pokemon, to be honest. Um, look at that thing, it just looks so sick too. Like the beak and the eyes, it looks like a very scary Pokemon. Um, and actually Moltres was one of my, you know, first Pokemon that I liked uh, in the... I did not get the max off. I did not get the max off. That's unfortunate. Darkness comes out into the Steela. Flash Cannon goes into the Moltres, which I'm cool with. Uh, I bring the Grim Snarl back out and I I Giga Drain the Aleki. There's not much I can do at this point. That was a misplay on my part, not clicking the buttons in time. Light screen comes out. He's gonna go darkness into the Grim Snarl. Okay, good. Give me the Giga Drain. Give me back some health. Eh, it'll do. It'll have to do, right? Um, and then I'm gonna f Spirit Break into the Aleki and bring my Marowak back in. But. Effectively, I stalled out his uh, Dynamax turns. Now, unless he reads into it, he very well could read into it, but um, uh, I stalled out his Dynamax turns. So that's kind of the good thing there. But that does a lot of damage to the Grimmsnarl. It's a crit. It's a crit, okay. 
Here we go. Airstream comes out into the Grim Snarl, which I'm fine with actually. I'm I'm fine with that. Because now I don't think a plus one. Or actually, that's no, that's none. That's a plus none. So I definitely nasty plot here, and I go for the big old max flare into the Moltres. Now Moltres isn't the most, um, most specially, sorry, most physically defensive Pokemon. So this could actually take it out, especially that it's not Dynamax. I know in Sun it definitely would, but. Here we go. Big old Marowak. Marowak's another cool Pokemon that I really enjoy using. So let's see what happens. Electro Web comes out. Lightning Rod. Special Attack. Doesn't do a lot to the Rotom. Let me one shot this, please. Fiery Wrath. Oh, I'm I'm in a beautiful position. Rotom flinched. I'm okay with that. Just give me the one shot. Give me the one shot. Please give me the one shot. And I one shot. Beautiful. Okay. It's a game. It is a game. Let's see who he brings. Tapu Fini. Okay. Tapu Fini. I'm very cool with that. Um, because this is an easy, this is an easy nasty, again, I nasty plot and I try to quake into the Aleki. Because I don't think, I don't think that's going to do a lot of damage, right? Uh, his muddy water or whatever that might be coming out, especially we're in sun. I mean, that's great, right? Hits the Rotom, I'm fine with. Speed Falls, Scald. That does a lot, that does do a lot, but I'm okay with that. Nasty Plot comes out. And I Quake. Quake comes out, beautiful. The Aleki comes out. Now, now he has a choice, right? He has a choice of going between my Rotom or my uh, Marowak, because either one poses a pretty big threat. Let's see what he has in the back. Landorus. Landorus. Landorus, okay. Well, that's not good for my Marowak, but That's not good at all for my Marowak. Um, I think I have to Hydro Pump the Landorus. Because the Finny doesn't scare my Steela in the back. And I Max Guard here. He's going to try to get rid of the... Oh, beautiful. Rotom's Levitate, it basically hits his own Pokemon, the Finny. Oh, that does a lot of damage to Finny, too. Scald onto Rotom, that doesn't do anything. Not very effective, Burn comes off. Now let me get the Hydro Pump, and the Hydro Pump misses again. Ah! Okay, well, I think what's happening now is that has to be banded. That has to be banded. So then the Steela comes out, and he's going to Earthquake again. Right? Please tell me that he does. If he doesn't, I just look like a fool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's banded. He's banded. We're, we're in a good position. This is game. Because he can't touch my Steela or my... Um, 
Or my Rotom. Scald into the Rotom. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Beautiful. We should take this. Now, if he's not banded, that could be an issue. But I think he's banded. And again, we're relying on <laughs> inaccurate moves, which I hate, but let's try to Giga Drain it just to get some health back. He should just Rock Slide. Okay. Okay, he's not banded. It, what? What was that then? Why would he do an Earthquake twice in a row? That was kind of dumb. The Hydro Pump! Come on! Hit the Hydro Pump! That's all I'm asking! Let's go! Hit the Hydro Pump! Hit the Hydro Pump! I just need one! Just give me one! I think we've already missed like four times, so... Rock Slide comes out. Don't flinch. Please don't flinch. Flinched. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And it's coming down to it again. Give me the Giga Drain. No flinch, no flinch, no flinch. Giga Drain comes out. Beautiful. Heal some back. Now we're banking on a miss here. Which is not a fun thing to bank on. Uh, rock Slide. Yeah, come on. And we're going against Finchy. And Finchy here has a uh Nidoking King Urshifu team. Hold up. Hold up. I think this is the team that Cybertron featured. Let me let me double check this real quick. Urshifu, Nido King. So if it is, then we know exactly the move set, right? Um, sorry, YouTube ads. Let's see. That is okay. So. Oh, man. Okay, so then he wants to set up Trick Room. I think the Grim Snarl Steel is actually really good here. Uh, Earthquake Ice Beam. Yeah, because that Nidoking King can't really touch my Steela. And neither can the Regirock. So, um, as long as I'm able to do that, that's good. And then the Ndidi in the back with the... Yeah, with the Rotom in the back. So here we go. Yeah, this is the this is the uh, Nido King team. We'll see how we do. Finchy coming out with the Reggie Rock Urshifu. Okay. Okay. That's actually not bad at all. So what I can do is I can just take the weakness policy right away from it. Does nothing. Um, so I'm gonna trick into the Reggie Rock and start picking up speed. Let's start picking up speed here. Cause even if he trick rooms, right? Uh, that Reggie Rock is going last if I can able if I'm able to get that that 
trick off. So he probably thought I was going to leave with Hatterini um, and Didi, which is, you know, kind of a good thing about this team is that if I have Hatterini and Didi in the in the top two spots, my opponents is most likely going to assume, hey, I'm bringing that in, right? So let's see here. That is sashed, I believe. Yeah, that's focus sashed. Okay, so that's not the greatest. But we're fine with that. Uses detect. I'm fine with that. As long as I can get your weakness policy off. Here we go. And then at this point, that does a lot of damage still. That does a lot of damage still. So my speed rises. Curse happens. Which I'm fine with. I think, uh... I fake tears it. And go for the steel spike. Because that Urshifu is not really that scary anymore. Withdrew Urshifu. Yeah, that Urshifu wasn't even going to stay in there anyways. So Dusclops comes in. He sees my weakness policy. He sees my assault vest. And he's going to max. So I don't know though. Because Regirock is pretty bulky. But a, a fake tears, um, a, a fake tears steel spike could do it. Clear body. Oh, I forgot about that. That's not good. Well, you know, I get my defense. I get my defense. Now here's the here's the positive about knowing what my team is. He does have ally switch. So my, my thought process is he's going to go for the ally switch, right? Um, gets the sand up. Which I'm fine with. If I can get a reflect up, I, I should be in a very good position here. So let's get the reflect up. And I think he's going to go for the ally switch. I have to read into it, right? Because at this point, a Trick Room is not, is not going to do anything. So, he goes for the Ally Switch. That's the beautiful thing about playing against teams that you kind of know what's already going to happen, right? Grim Snow uses the Reflect. Get that screen up. And the Steel Spike comes out. Barum. Beautiful. Well, I guess here's the problem then, right? Is that the Urshifu still exists. No, but the Urshifu is threatened by my... by my Grimmsnarl, so... He could Nightshade and try to take out the Grimmsnarl, but <laughs> he quits just quits so there you have it that's the team folks uh the hatterini and dd team definitely you know got to put in some work with that hatterini but man that rotom was the least valuable player uh with all those misses it was pretty unfortunate uh but uh yeah it's the team the trick room team that i have with the grim snarl just for extra speed control uh, it is not a really a hard Trick Room team. That's the other thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the episode. Um, because you have that option of, you know, uh, boosting its speed up with the Celesteela. You have Rotom that's not the slowest thing 
uh, in the world. So it's definitely not a hard trick room team, but Hatterini is definitely fun. Uh, I'm for sure going to be, you know, using this team a little bit more often um, and getting the hang of it, especially with a couple tournaments coming up. Uh, I do want to get my hang on, you know, basically one team in particular. But this is the team for now. Uh, check it out. The rental code is right there. Uh, I'm going to be also uploading the poker paste onto the YouTube description. But if you like the episode, uh, please, you know, hit the like button and subscribe. That way uh, it supports the channel and uh, we can make more videos like this. So thanks again for checking in. Uh, happy holidays to everyone. I know uh, it's that time of the year and uh, let's bring it on into the next year. Peace.